Stanton finished second, Damon Bradshaw third. The following week, it was on to Millville, Minnesota, Spring Creek Motocross Park, and the opening round of the 500cc National Championship Series. For Jeff Stanton, he had to be thinking, this one has got to go my way. This one has got to be different. Stanton has long been considered one of the premier 500cc riders in the United States, but has never won that title. Would 1991 be any different? We'll see as the season unfolds. We're watching the start of moto number two. Damon Bradshaw took the whole shot, rider number 11. He's out front on an air-cooled Yamaha. Running in the number two position, rider number two, that's Jeff Stanton. Third place, the property of Jean-Michel Bale. In the opening moto, Bale was the easy winner over Damon Bradshaw in the number two position with Jeff Stanton third. Fourth went to Jeff Ward, the defending 500cc national champion. In the opening moto, Jean-Michel Bale took the whole shot. Bradshaw made the pass to take over the number one position. Bale followed him for a lap and a half, then regained the lead, then motored away from the rest of the field. Here in moto number two, a little different story as Damon Bradshaw out of the gate, took the lead, being pressured by Jeff Stanton. But Bradshaw holds that charge off to retain the number one position. Stanton running second, running in the number three spot, just watching what's happening in front of him, the newly crowned 250 national champ, Jean-Michel Bale, also the winner of moto number one. Just off the pace, right behind that leading trio comes the green Kawasaki with the number one plate on it. There he is coming into the picture. That is the defending 500cc national champion, Jeff Ward. Now look at the drive that Stanton got out of that last corner as he took over the number one position. That shoves Bradshaw, at least momentarily, back into the number two spot. So Stanton out front, Bradshaw now running second in this very rough Millville track. Back into number three position, Jean-Michel Bale, Ward still holding down fourth. Now watch what happens in this sand section coming up. Bale is in third, watch, right there he stalled his bike. Going into third was Jeff Ward. Let's take another look at that incident, and I think you'll see it in slow motion. Now watch just to the left of your screen. Here comes Damon Bradshaw. He's in second, and there is Bale in third. The camera's going to pan with Bradshaw, but Bale stops right there. So he drops back to the number four position, considerably off the pace. Not for long, though. Jean-Michel Bale was made to ride 500cc machines. He bounces back and quickly makes up all the ground that he lost. Here he is hounding Damon Bradshaw, who is now in the number three position. Jeff Ward has moved up to take the number two spot away from Bradshaw. So it's Stanton out front, and here's Bale making the pass. Jeff Ward running second, Jean-Michel Bale just moving into third, Damon Bradshaw back and forth. There is Ward just disappearing from view off the left side of your screen. We should point out that in an earlier incident during one of the heat races, one of the qualifying rounds, Jeff Matasevich from Team Kawasaki crashed hard and broke his femur on one of the rust portions of this uh, racetrack. Matasevich has been taken to the hospital, and it is expected that Matasevich will miss not only the remainder of the 1991 season, but most of the 1992 season as well. The femur is the large thigh bone, and that is probably the worst bone that a rider can break in his leg. Jeff Ward, meanwhile, has dropped back to third. Jean-Michel Bale, out of sight of our camera, the back portion of this rough track in Millville, Minnesota, has taken over the number two position and is closing on Jeff Stanton, who has led almost since the outset of moto number two. There is the gap between them with just a few laps remaining, about five or six seconds at this point. Still holding third, the defending national champ, Jeff Wardy Ward, Rider number one aboard that green Kawasaki. The gap is narrowing. There it is. There's your leader, Jeff Stanton. Right behind him comes Jean-Michel Bale. They are ripping this Millville racetrack apart. Backside, Bale draws even with Stanton. Stanton is not going to let him make the pass if he can help it, and Stanton has nothing to say about it. Jean-Michel Bale with an outstanding move goes to the outside to take over the number one position, and I have to say at this point that Jeff Stanton is a defeated rider. He was going just as hard as he possibly could. It was not hard enough. Bale came from well off the pace to catch Stanton, make the pass, and he'll take the checkered flag to win both motos of the opening round of the 500cc championship series. Jeff Stanton will hold on to finish in the number two position. That's going to garner him overall honors for the day, the position of second. He's eight points down after one round. Third place goes to Bradshaw. He'll be 10 points down in the standings, then Ward, then Ron Lachine. 
Round two of the six race 500cc national championship motocross series was at Washugo Park, Washugo, Washington. Located in the Pacific Northwest, surrounded by pine trees and mountains, the Washugo track is one of the most beautiful and challenging in the United States. The Washugo event always draws a huge crowd. 1991 was no exception. The weather was absolutely perfect for motocross. Let's pick up the action as the gate drops for moto number one at Washugo Motocross Park. Thundering down the long straightaway, a right-hander, it's Jeff Ward, rider number three. On the outside, it's Damon Bradshaw. Bradshaw got the drive into the second corner. He just simply held it on a little longer than than. Uh, Ward to take over the number one position. So it's Bradshaw leading with Jeff Ward in second, but not for long. Jeff Ward got the drive coming out of the fourth corner, and he takes over the number one position. Jeff Ward running second. Right behind him comes a pair of Honda riders. You know who that has to be, Jeff Stanton and Jean-Michel Vail. Let's pick up the action a few laps into the race. It's still Jeff Ward out front. Damon Bradshaw is no longer among the leaders. Running in a number two position, rider number eight is the series points leader, Jean-Michel Bale, holding down third, Jeff Stanton. Back in fourth place, starting to drop slightly off the pace, Damon Bradshaw aboard the Yamaha. Earlier conversations in the pits indicated that this might well be a pivotal race in the 500cc National Championship Series. The series is only six races long. If Bale was able to charge to the front as he did in Minnesota, if he was able to take another pair of moto wins, would that pretty much spell doom for the rest of the class? Out front, Jeff Ward was having none of that kind of talk. Ward had won in Washugal on four other occasions. It was his favorite racetrack. But look at this. Jean-Michel Bale throwing caution to the wind, took over the number one position, dropping Ward back to third, back to second, rather, with Jeff Stanton in third. The cards were being played just as they were in Minnesota. Jean-Michel Bale was leaving the rest of the field in his wake in his 500cc championship chase. Through the trees and the valleys, Washugo, Washington, Jeff Stanton managed to overall Ward to move into the number two position. Still, it was Jean-Michel Bale out front. The question now became, did Stanton wait too long to make his move? Would he have enough left to catch Jean-Michel Bale? Could he catch Jean-Michel Bale? As the laps began to wind down, that question was answered. Stanton drew to the rear wheel of Bale and issued a challenge. Bale was quick to respond. He grabbed a handful of throttle and reopened the lead to about five. Let's make that six bike lengths. Stanton, though, refused to give up. Both riders were on the edge as they rocketed around this Washugal Park motocross track, up over the top of the big infield jump. Bale took a quick look behind him, and all he saw was the number two on the number plate of Jeff Stanton's Honda. With the crowd cheering both riders on, Stanton still hot in pursuit. Bale not able to pull away. Now Stanton gets an incredible drive through one of the roughest parts of the racetrack. He goes to the inside. Will he make the pass? Yes, but watch this. Bale comes right back underneath Stanton and regains the number one position. This was some kind of race, moto number one in the 500cc national championship. Here is a replay. Now watch this. Stanton gets an incredible drive and a good line. Bale sees him coming, and Bale just hits the brakes, squares the corner off, and squirts to the inside of Stanton with a handful of throttle and drag races Stanton to the corner. He gets there first. In the closing laps, Bale lengthened his lead over Jeff Stanton. He'll take the easy win in moto number one. Stanton will finish in the number two position with Jeff Ward third. In the final moto of the day, it was all Jeff Ward. For the fifth time at Washugal and the 32nd time in his career, Ward won a national championship event. Stanton finished in the number two position. Jean-Michel Bale was third. Round three, Broom Tioga, Binghamton, New York. After two rounds of 500cc national championship racing, Jean-Michel Bale was on top with 95 points. Stanton was close behind with 86. Then came Ward with 83. Bradshaw had 76, rounding out the top five. Ron Lachine with 64. At Broom Tioga, the riders are on the starting line, set to go. We'll watch action from moto number one. 
Fighter number 100 is Lachine. Right next to him, number one, is Jeff Ward. And would you believe the veteran, two times a 500cc national champ, Jeff Ward, is going to squeak by on the inside and for the second consecutive week, take control of the 500cc class. Running in a number two position was Damon Bradshaw, rider number 11 on the Yamaha. Up front and ready to challenge, Jean-Michel Bale, Jeff Stanton, Doug Dubach, Ron Lachine. They were all in the first group of riders and set to do damage at Broome Tioga. The eyes of the crowd, though, were out front as Jeff Ward continues to parade around the Broome Tioga track, holding down that number one spot. In third place, Jean-Michel Bale now challenges at the rear wheel of Damon Bradshaw. Ward opened up about a four, maybe five bike length lead in the early going of moto number one, but Bradshaw, but Bale and Stanton were not far behind. Doug Dubach was running in a number five position with Ron Lachine sixth. Now Bradshaw starts to close on Jeff Ward. The pressure is on. Can the veteran hold down that number one slot? He's going to need every race, every point in every moto in this six race series to be a factor in the national championship chase. It's still Ward out of San Juan Capistrano holding down the number one position. Bradshaw coming out of Mooresville, North Carolina. He's just a teenager, 18 years of age, and he is giving the veterans fits. Opening moto action at Broome Tioga. Bradshaw squirts to the inside, and he takes over the number one position. Ward drops back to second. And look at this, Jean-Michel Bale dropped his Honda to the ground. Now, Bale was quickly up and back into it. He did, however, lose a considerable amount of time to the leaders. How many times have we seen this season Bale in similar situations? In the 250 class, in the 500 class, Bale did it just one week ago, stalled his motorcycle in a big sand stretch, lost a lot of time, but picked it up, not only caught the leaders, went on to make the pass and take control of the moto and win it going away. That's the kind of rider Bale is, and everything has been going Bale's way this season. Damon Bradshaw right now having things his way. He's moving through traffic, passing a couple of slower riders, Bradshaw out front is still being hounded by Jeff Ward in the number two position. Bradshaw will go on to take the win in moto number one, followed by Jeff Ward. Finishing third will be Jean-Michel Bale. Jeff Stanton will finish fourth. In the second moto, Jean-Michel Bale was the winner with Stanton running second. Jeff Ward third and running in a number four position was Ron Lachine. Here are the point standings after three rounds. Bale on top with 140. Then in number two position was Stanton with 126. 125 for Jeff Ward. It's on to Steel City, USA. Just on the edge, the outer edge, if you will, of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for round four of the 500cc National Championship Series. The action we'll watch is from the opening moto. Riders are on the line, some 40 strong, waiting for the gate to drop this very long Steel City racetrack. In the middle, rider number two is Jeff Stanton. To his left, screen right, Jeff Ward, and Ward will take the hole shot. He has dominated hole shots in his 500cc National Championship Series. There's Ward running in second now, Jeff Stanton. Third place, off the line, the property of Damon Bradshaw. Then comes Ron Lachine, rider number 100, on the comeback trail. And right behind Lachine, putting all the pressure on, is Jean-Michel Bale, the series points leader. Bale looking for passing room. Lachine not giving way, but Lachine breaks. Bale leaves it on. He goes to the outside and makes the pass. Bale has taken over the number four position. Jeff Ward, the overall winner at Washuga, Washington, looking for his second overall win of the season. Jean-Michel Bale has already collected a pair. No other rider has overall honors in this 500cc class. It's Ward out front. He's still followed by Stanton, Bradshaw, then Jean-Michel Bale. JMB putting the pressure on. Ron Lachine dropping back to the number five position. Now Bale gets a drive to the inside of Damon Bradshaw. And he takes that spot away from the teenager from Mooresville, North Carolina. On the opposite end of that spectrum is the veteran Jeff Ward. Ward has won here at Steel City for the last two years. He's looking to make it three in a row, and that would give him, it would tie him, rather, with Jean-Michel Bale, two overall victories apiece. Right now, Bale is working on the rear wheel of his teammate, Jeff Stanton. Stanton has held down the number two position since the drop of the gate, but here comes JMB Jean-Michel Bale. He makes the pass on the outside. He found a line where there was none and takes over the number two position. 
Vale will now set his sights on Jeff Ward. Can he catch the fleeing Kawasaki rider? Well, inside of one lap, he closes the distance between the two of them and now has Ward in his sights. A downhill section takes him into the lower portion, the middle part of this racetrack at Steel City. Bale will study the lines of Jeff Ward. He will look for some kind of passing room, a portion of the racetrack. And look there, Jean-Michel Bale cut across the front of Jeff Ward to take over the lead. I don't know how he did that without the two riders colliding. Ward came right back, good and hard, strong, but to no avail, they were side by side through two corners and about 100 yards of this Steel City racetrack. But Bale comes out on top. He takes over the number one position in moto number one. But watch what happens. Perhaps Bale relaxes just a little too much. Watch this corner. All by himself, Bale goes down. Ward sees it. He goes way to the outside, outside the line in the groove to make the pass, and he again moves to the number one position. Question now becomes, will Jean-Michel Bale settle for that number two spot, or will he try to reel Ward back in to regain the lead? Ward is giving it everything that he can possibly give it, but Jean-Michel Bale has again closed the gap. Look at this. For the second time today, Bale is putting the pressure on Jeff Ward. The defending 500cc national champ looks to his right, but Bale is way out to his left. I don't know that Ward even knows he's there. He does now. He can hear the engine, the powerful engine of that Honda revving as Bale pulled alongside the Kawasaki of Jeff Ward. A good line through the corner for Ward, but Jean-Michel Michelle Bale squared the corner off, went towards inside to make the pass. It was an unbelievable move to regain the number one position. It's the second time today that Ward has been in this spot, having been passed by Jean Michel Bale, and also the second time that Bale has taken over the lead. My guess is you will not see another mistake from Jean Michel Bale. He just does not make too many, let alone two in a row. So Bale is going to go on and take the win in moto number one. He'll be followed across the line by uh, Jeff Ward in the number two position. Third place will go to Jeff Stanton, and fourth will be the property of Damon Bradshaw. Overall honors for the day, though, will go to Jeff Ward, as in moto number two. Ward took the win almost wire to wire. Jean Michel Bale will finish in the number three position in that moto. Jeff Stanton finishes second, so they gain just a couple of points on Jean Michel Bale. Bale still with a commanding points lead after four of six rounds. Both Bale and Ward have won a pair of 500cc national championship events in this 1991 season. Four motos remain. We go now to round five at Bud's Creek, Maryland, Bud's Creek Motocross Park. Temperatures in the low 60s and overcast sky, a perfect day for motocross. We're looking at the lineup for moto number two. First moto was history. Jean-Michel Bale won it. Finishing in a number two position was Jeff Ward. Third place went to Jeff Stanton with fourth, the property of Damon Bradshaw. In the opening laps of moto number one, Jean-Michel Bale was slightly off the pace. Before it was over, though, he had total control. Moto number two, a different story for the Frenchman. He took the whole shot from the drop of the gate, followed by Damon Bradshaw. And this has the makings of a Jean-Michel Bale runaway. But watch what happens. Still on the opening lap, you have to keep your eye on Damon Bradshaw, who is running in the number two position. Watch as the pair of front runners head uphill. Bradshaw, about five bike lengths behind, goes through the rough part of the racetrack, just keeps it dialed in. He goes to the inside of Bale, took the good line away. Bale had nowhere to go coming out of that corner. Bradshaw takes over the number one spot. Bale back at second. Holding down third was uh, Jeff Ward. Uh, Gene Newmack running in a number four position. Then came Jeff Stanton in fifth. Still in the early going, here comes Jeff Ward to challenge Jean-Michel Bale in the number two position. Watch Bale as he makes this corner. Bale has a serious bobble, almost goes down. He saved it at the last moment. He did, though, allow Jeff Ward to squirt by on the inside, but Bale recovers quickly before uh, a lap of the racetrack has gone by. In fact, let's make that before 200 yards of the racetrack has gone by. Bale regains the number two position in the standings in moto number two. Jeff Ward not about to give up. Ward tries to get a good inside line, some kind of a drive on Jean-Michel Bale. No dice. Bale is able to control the situation. Lines change on virtually every lap of this Bud's Creek racetrack. Ryder goes to one position on one lap, 
He tries that same position the next time around that same line and it's changed. It's no longer the good way. He might have to move over two, maybe even three foot. It's rather soft and the lines continually shift. And right now Jeff Ward seems to be finding the better lines better than Jean Michel Bale. But Ward goes to the outside and he bogs down momentarily. Bale is able to control the number two position in the standings in moto number two. Out front remember is still Damon Bradshaw. Closing stages of moto number one and there is Bradshaw rider number 11 followed by Jean Michel Bale still in third it's Jeff Ward. Watch this uphill section. There's a jump right in the middle of it. Bradshaw and Bale, two singles. Look at this. Ward doubles all the way to the top of that jump. It gained a tremendous amount of time for the veteran. He was not in position to pass, but again, he drew close to the rear wheel of the leaders. And this time, Bale is the one that makes the pass. Bradshaw has to drop back to second. Jean-Michel Bale takes over the lead in the closing stages. Ward still running in third. Now, don't forget, we're looking at action in moto number two. Mo Jean Michel Bale was the winner of uh, the opening moto, followed by Jeff Ward. Ward finished second. Third place went to Stanton. Fourth place, Damon Bradshaw. Fifth place in the opening moto went to a Gene Newmack from Brooksville, Florida. Damon Bradshaw not giving up. Here goes Bradshaw to the outside, looking for some kind of room, some kind of running room to make a move on Jean Michel Bale, a lap rider momentarily in between Bale and Bradshaw. You have to figure that cost Bradshaw a couple of bike lengths. It's going to be of no avail when this one is over. Jean Michel Bale is going to take the win as Bradshaw drops further off the pace. Bradshaw is going to finish in the number two position for Jean Michel Bale. It will be his third overall win of the season. With one round remaining, he's going to pad his points lead even more. 235 to Jeff Ward's 214. Stanton has 206. Then Bradshaw and Ron Lachine. One round remaining of the 500 CC National Championship Series. Unadilla Valley, New York. Unadilla Valley Sports Center is the site. No question about it. This is the number one track in the United States. Ask any motocross fan on either coast that has ever been here. He'll quickly tell you that this is not only the toughest, it is the most spectacular racetrack in the country. The gate has dropped and action is underway. This is the second moto. Sean Kalos uh, is going to emerge as the leader in this one. Now Damon Bradshaw temporarily out in front. But watch Sean Kalos number 911 aboard a privateer Kawasaki. He also led moto number one. He's going to be the leader in this one. Bradshaw thinks everything is going his way. Watch what happens. Bradshaw goes wide. Kalos goes to the inside. And there's a big gulch coming up, and Kalos is going to dive to the bottom of that gulch in the number one position. Now, Sean Kalos is a privateer, rider number 911. He is sporting that big number only because uh, he spent most of the 1990 season in Europe. He was not able to uh, earn enough points to have a nationally recognized number here in the United States. He is a tough rider, an excellent rider. His best days are still ahead of him. He continues to improve each race he rides in. Kalos leading the best in the business right now with Damon Bradshaw on this tough Unadilla track running in the number two position. Jean-Michel Bale, meanwhile, slightly off the pace, has a clear mission in front of him. After moto number one of this Unadilla event, the final round of the series, he is 18 points ahead of Jeff Ward. All he has to do now is finish in an upright position and he'll coast home to the championship. That's just exactly what he wants to do. Kalos has been passed by Bradshaw. He came right back and repassed Bradshaw. David Bradshaw has to be wondering, where did this guy come from? He's not been a factor all year. I've been racing with Jeff Stanton. I've been racing with Bale. I've been racing with uh, Jeff Ward, but I've not seen Sean Kalos. And right now, Kalos is taking the measure of Damon Bradshaw. Now behind Bradshaw and behind Kalos, in fact, well out of uh, reach of the front-running duo, sits the key to the 1991 500cc National Championship. That, of course, is Jean-Michel Bale. Keeps it upright. He collects just a few points. In fact, all he needs is two, and uh, he'll walk away with this championship season. Uh, right now, he's sitting in a fifth or sixth position, and that's going to be enough. Meanwhile, Sean Kalos, number 911, out of Litchfield Park, Arizona, continues to lead the best in the business. 
business. Running in a number two position is Bradshaw Stanton running third. Fourth place, the property of rider number one. That's the defending 500cc national champ, Jeff Ward, out of San Juan Capistrano. Here comes Stanton and Ward, and Ward makes the pass. Ward goes into the number three position. Jeff Ward has been riding like a teenager instead of the 29-year-old rider that he is. And now look at this. Both Stanton and Ward have moved ahead of Bradshaw. Ward to the number two spot and Stanton to third. Bradshaw back to fourth. And they now are chasing Sean Kalos, number 911, out of Litchfield Park, Arizona, the privateer aboard the Kawasaki. He has taken everything that the veterans could throw at him, the number one riders in the world. He's taken it and spit it back at them. Let's see what Jeff Ward can do with Sean Kalos. They're headed again across the top portion of the racetrack. They'll dive into this long, sinking cavity. There goes Ward to the inside. And you saw Ward reach up as he takes over the number one spot. You saw him reach up and tug something. What he was doing was advancing the film system on his goggles. When his uh, uh, vision is blurred, he reaches up and pulls a string like a, uh, a Venetian blind string. And uh, it advances a piece of film, celluloid film, across the front of his goggles. And that, in effect, gives him a cleansing job. It's like stopping at the gas station and having him splash water on you and say, hey, just do my windshield, and Bradshaw goes down. Damon Bradshaw had worked back to the number two position. Around that right-hand corner in that soft, loamy Unadilla dirt, the motorcycle got away from him, and Bradshaw just slid out in the corner. The motorcycle stalled. He's going to get going again, and he does. Now, it's doubtful whether or not, even if Bradshaw is passed because of that crash, that uh, anything will affect his overall position in the standings of the series. It could uh, drop Bradshaw down a position or two in the standings of the event, but uh, he's pretty well secured in fourth place for the championship point standings. Uh, Jeff Stanton, you saw, did get by Bradshaw. He'll finish in the number two position, winning the moto, Jeff Ward. That'll give him his third win of the year, tying him with Jean-Michel Bale in that category. Here are the final series standings. Is Jean-Michel Bale coming out on top? Jeff Ward in second place. Jeff Stanton finishes in a number